Welcome to Artmind. Today we are learning about the spot healing brush tool in Photoshop. The spot healing brush tool is located here and its shortcut is J. It's showing an inactive sign because we need to select a layer first. So let's select the layer for this image. This makes the spot healing brush tool active. Now what I want to do is that I want to get rid of this number 6 from the shirt. But before that let me just zoom in first. And I'll make sure that Content Aware is selected. Content Aware, as the name suggests, is aware of the content and makes corrections based on that content. In our example, our content is this striped shirt and for correction, we need to remove this number 6. So I'm going to bring my spot healing brush tool over number 6 and then click on it. Which removes number 6 and replaces it with the pattern of the shirt. I'll undo this and try the next option. After Content Aware, we have Create Texture. What it does is that it samples the pixels that fall within the brush and then creates a texture using them. This is usually how blurry and textured it turns out. I'm gonna undo this. Then move on to the next option which is Proximity Match. Here the spotting brush will sample the pixels from its proximity, that is its perimeter, and then fill this area with them. Most of the times you get the same result as Content Aware, but sometimes you get a different result. There is a high chance of the spotting brush sampling this proximity and then fill up this area with it. So let's find out. So it did sample the button area and then corrected this circular region with it. Now I want you to pay attention at how solid and crisp this healed area is. Because proximity match offers an additional option which is called diffusion. We get a crisp solid correction when the diffusion is low and we get a faded and blurry correction when the diffusion is high. So one being the least, this is the sharpest correction that you can ever get. And if I undo this and increase the diffusion, I can show you the faded effect. So you can see the faded correction that sort of tries to blend in with the surrounding as opposed to the sharp correction earlier. Up till now, all the healings or corrections were done on the same image layer, which is a destructive way of doing things. What if I want the original image to be on one layer and the correction on another? Let's try that. This is our original image which we want to stay intact. And for correction, I'll create a new layer. Let's name it Correction. And I'll make sure that the correction layer is selected. Now let's click on the number to remove it. What's wrong? I've clicked on it twice but it seems like it's not doing its job. The reason is, this layer is an empty layer and all our pixels are in this layer. So obviously we need to sample the pixels from this layer. For that, we need to instruct Photoshop to sample pixels from all the layers irrespective of what layer is selected. So we have to check sample all layers. Now if I click on it, it should work. So it has sampled the pixels from this layer and put the correction on this layer. If I move it, you can see the healed part. The spot healing brush tool also comes with its own set of blend modes. Normal is basically the default blend mode which doesn't add any special effects on the healed part, so we'll keep it at that. Next we have the replace blend mode which we will learn in relation with normal. The difference between normal and replace is only apparent if we use proximity match. For now, I'll use normal as my blend mode and then select proximity match. If I click my spot healing brush tool here, it's going to sample the pixels from its proximity, use those pixels and then fill up this area. I'll take a wild guess and say that this region will be used to fill this up. So let's see what happens. Although this area is filled up by the pixels of this region, it doesn't have the exact same hue, saturation or brightness as this. The normal blend mode forces these pixels to blend in with these pixels to form a sort of mixed color. This is not the case with the Replace Blend Mode. Now select Replace. Let's click on the same spot and see what happens. Quite clearly, the exact same pixels from this region have filled up this area without any change. And this is the difference between Normal Blend Mode and Replace Blend Mode. Next, I'm going to demonstrate Darken and Multiply Blend Modes together. But first, let's see how Normal behaves in this example. With normal as my blend mode, if I click on the black spot, it disappears. If I click on the white spot, it disappears. Let's undo that. 
We shall now try the darken and the multiply blend modes. And if you have watched my tutorial on blend modes, you must know that these two blend modes belong to the group of the dark lot, meaning everything dark remains and everything light perishes. I'll explain that by using the darken blend mode. In this image, which of the two do you think is darker? Well, I think black is darker than grey. And in the kingdom of the dark lord, the dark pixels dominate the light pixels. So in the circular area, I'm hoping that I'll still see the black pixels even after applying the spot healing brush tool. Let's find out. So the dark and blend mode favors the black pixels over the grey pixels and lets the black pixels stay. Next, which of these two do you think is darker? I think grey is darker than white. So if I apply the spot healing brush tool on it, I think the white should disappear. I'm going to put that to test. So it's true. Next, I'm going to use the same example for multiply. But before that, I'll have to undo the whole thing first. Then I'll select multiply from the drop down. Multiply acts a little different here. For example, if I click over here, it's going to compare the white and the grey color and try to pull the white to the grey end. And if I click over here, Photoshop is going to compare the black and the grey color and pull the grey color towards the blacker end. Let's take an example for this. In this image, I want to reduce the highlights over here. I'm going to select normal as my blending mode and see what it does. It destroys the whole texture of the skin. I'm going to undo this and try darken blend mode. So it keeps the dark lines intact and just darkens the highlighted portion. So unlike normal mode, darken mode keeps the skin texture intact. I'm gonna undo this and try multiply. What's happening over here is that it's pushing this color towards this. And over here, this color more towards this. Next, we are going to learn the Lighten and the Screen Blend modes. I'll select Lighten first. Again, if you have watched my video on Blend modes, you will know that Lighten belongs to the Kingdom of the White Lord. Here, the lighter colors remain and the darker colors get knocked out. Between grey and black, which one do you think is lighter? Obviously, grey is lighter than black. So with the Lighten Blend mode, if I use my Spotling Brush tool over here, which color do you think should remain? Obviously, the lighter color, which is grey. Between white and grey, which one do you think is lighter? White, right? So if I use my spotling brush tool over here, I think white should remain. I'm gonna undo this. And then try screen blend mode. Now the screen blend mode over here works a little different than in the actual blend modes that we have learned in our earlier tutorial about blend modes. Now if I use my spotling brush tool over here, it's gonna pull the grey colour towards white and produce something like this. And over here, it's going to pull the black towards grey and produce something like this. Let's take an example. I'm going to zoom in on this image. I've added these white spots on purpose to teach you the two blend modes. What if I want to get rid of these brown spots but I want the whites to be there? Let's see if the normal blend mode does it. I'm going to go ahead and click on this region a couple of times. So you can see, it has taken away all the white spots. We don't want this. So we are going to use the Lighten Blend mode. I'll click a couple of times on this region again. This time, the dark blemishes disappear, but the whites remain. So this is your before, and this is your after. Next, I'm going to try the screen blend mode. And again, I'll click on this region. So this is our before and after. If we take for example this dot, the color has shifted from this towards this. 
and over here the color has shifted from this to this next we'll learn the color blend mode and for that we have this image which i'm going to zoom in so let's select the color blend mode and if you remember from my previous tutorial on blend modes what does the color blend mode affect it affects hue and saturation right so if i click on this yellow spot this portaling brush tool is going to take the hue and saturation of the skin color and apply it over here but whose luminosity is it going to take it is going to take the luminosity of the yellow color itself so let's see what that means and what that creates i'm going to click on this yellow spot so it has got the hue and saturation from the skin color and since the yellow color was really bright the skin tone over here is much lighter let's try it on the white spot we get an even lighter skin tone let's now try the luminosity blend mode and as you might have guessed it affects the luminosity of the image since the skin around this white spot is dark if i click on this white spot it is also going to get dark so both the skin and this gray spot has the same luminosity let's click on this yellow spot and it also becomes a darker shade of yellow Last but not the least, I'm going to teach you how to maneuver the spotting brush. If you click over here, you get a couple of options. You get the same options if you right click on the artboard. Here you can change the brush size. Or you could use your left and right square brackets on your keyboard to do the same. Next we have hardness. Let me show you how it looks when hardness is at 0%. I'm going to click on this spot. And if I turn off the image layer, you can see how the correction looks. The brush is not solid and is fading outward. Let's see what happens when we max out our hardness to 100%. I'm going to click on the same spot. And then turn off the original image. You can see that the correction over here is totally solid. Next we have the spacing option. Let's first use the least spacing which is 1% which actually means there is no spacing. With this if I track my brush over here it's going to give me a continuous sampling. Let's undo that. And I'm going to increase the spacing now. With this if I use my spotling brush the sampling will be spaced. Let's undo that. You can also change the roundness of the spotting brush by pulling these anchor points. Or you could directly use the input box over here. You can adjust the angle of the brush by using this arrow. Or you could use the input box over here or here. Here you can control the spotting brush size in several ways. If you have a dial, you can use that to make your brush size bigger or smaller. If you have a sketch pad, you can use the pen pressure to determine the brush size, or you could use the stylus wheel of your pen to do that. And of course, if you have none of these, you can select off. And this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.